Hey guys, my name is Jeremy Nicholson. I'm a wildlife biologist for the Idaho Department of Fish and Game. My primary focus is grizzly bear research and management. And as a bear biologist, I get asked all the time, what to do if you're involved with a bear attack? And that's a really good question to ask, but maybe even a better question to ask is how to avoid a bear attack. Um, and I will be honest, you can do everything the right way, but still be involved in some type of encounter or attack. Uh, but today we're gonna to talk about things, hopefully that will reduce the likelihood of that. So causes for bear attacks are sudden or surprise encounters with female or the cubs, approaching a food source for a bear, bears will defend their food source ferociously, or if you're just out and about and you see a bear and you get too close to it and disturb the bear, it may just respond by defending itself. So ways to avoid a bear attack, you wanna avoid surprising a bear. You wanna make bears aware of your presence. And so the best thing you can do is if you're going around the landscape and just make a lot of noise, whether you're singing or hollering, whatever you're doing, if you're turning the corner especially or going over a hill where you don't have a lot of visibility, that's the time you really wanna make a lot of noise to make sure you're not gonna bump into a bear. And as, when you're out and about, you wanna actively identify bear sign and just look for the presence of bear on the landscape. So you wanna look for scat, tracks, um, day beds, and like I said, carcasses is another really important thing to look for. And a lot of times if you're out and about and you smell something that smells dead, then there's likely a carcass around. Or if you see ravens in the, in the distance or eagles in somewhere that they're not normally at, um, there could be a carcass on the ground. And like I said, bears will really defend that carcass. Um, bears leave day beds close to the trail sometime. You can see those. And um, particularly grizzly bears, they dig a lot for their, a lot of their food. So they're all the time digging for roots and tubers or animal caches. So a lot of times they'll leave these big holes in the area and you can see that as well. And everybody's, everybody knows bears rub on the trees. Um, they do that to mark the trees. They scratch it up a lot of times. And another thing you'll see when you're out and about is logs torn up by bears and they're doing this to find ants. So as they move through their landscape, they're leaving a lot of sign and you can see how old it is. If it's really fresh, then you know bears are probably nearby. Another really good thing you can do to avoid a close encounter and attack is hiking groups of three or more. If you do this, you're much less likely to have a close encounter with a bear if you're hiking by yourself or even if you have two people with you. So the more people you have with you, just more eyeballs looking around, looking to see if they can see anything and you're making a lot of noise. So if you see a bear out and you wanna get a picture of it, that's fine, but do it from a good safe distance. Um, don't approach the bear, don't get too close to it. If you get in that bear's bubble, then it may respond by coming at you. Avoid hiking at dawn or dusk, particularly in the summer months. This is when bears are most active. During the heat of the day, a lot of times they'll bed down, but they're most active in that morning and evening time. So um, if you can, avoid those situations. Um, if you do all that, that will definitely increase your likelihood of staying safe out there. But no matter what you do, sometimes you may have a close encounter or be involved in attack. Let's talk about encounters versus attacks. So an encounter is when you have a close call with a bear, you come pretty close distance from it, but they're not, they did not attack you. Um, you may get charged and they may run away. Um, so that's just a kind of a close encounter. So let's say you're walking through the woods and you come around and there's a berry patch and you see a bear, what should you do? Well, first of all, you wanna identify yourself as a human. Don't run away. And if you're with a group of people, Everybody get together and make yourself look as big as possible. If the bear is just standing there, increase the distance, get away from it. But if it's coming towards you, you wanna stand your ground. Because anytime that you're moving away from it and it's moving towards you, it may trigger that predator drive. So you don't wanna do that. You just wanna stand your ground unless it's um, in one spot. And always, if you have a chance, put your hand on your bear spray, get ready to use it if you need to. So a defensive attack, is this usually involves grizzly bears and it usually involves females with cubs or a bear defending their carcass. And this rarely involves black bears. So what do you wanna do? Once again, you wanna stand your ground, stay together in a group and get ready to use your bear turret. So how do you know if it's a defensive attack? Well, 
they're going to be defending the carcass or defending their cubs. So they're going to be pretty angry. Their ears are going to be back. They're going to be low to the ground and they're going to be screaming towards you. If that's the situation, then you're probably involved in some type of defensive attack. So what to do in that situation? This is when you play dead. And a lot of people say, is that what you really do? This is what you do. Um, you don't want to play dead when the bear is 40 yards away, but when it gets close to you, you want to hit the ground, cover your neck, and hopefully you got a backpack on. You're keeping your vital organs safe and the bear's going to get on top of you. And the best thing you can do is not put up any fight or any make any noises or anything. And I know that's easier than just saying it, but that's, that's the best thing you can do because the bear is trying to neutralize the problem. And the more you fight, the more you struggle, the longer it's going to be putting up a fight as well. Uh, but hopefully, before that ever happens, have your bear spray out and be ready to use it. The next type of attack is a non-defensive attack, and this usually involves bears exhibiting curious, predatory, or dominant behavior. And a lot of times it'll be a black bear or a younger grizzly bear trying to figure its way out in the world. So the difference between a defensive attack and a non-defensive attack, like I said, if it's a defensive attack, they're de defending their a piece of food or their cubs so they're going to be fired up about it. a non-defensive attack their ears are likely to be up they're kind of just following you along they're kind of trying to figure out if you're a potential food source so when this happens you want to stand your ground um, they're wanting to see how tough you are and you want to be as tough as possible so group together always don't run because this is really if they're testing you to see if you're a potential food source, if you run, they're really gonna, it's really gonna trigger their predatory response. So have your bear spray ready. And if the bear makes contact, this is when you channel your inner Chuck Norris and fight with everything you have. Um, you don't want to make them think you're an easy target. If, and this also, a non-defensive attack includes when a bear's reaching inside of a tent, trying to investigate and see what you are. And I've mentioned using your bear spray several times, and I will talk a little bit more specific about it. Um, when you're using your bear spray, you want to direct it towards the bear, but actually at a little bit of lower, lower level than the bear is. You don't want to spray right at it because a lot of the times the wind can pick it up and bring it over the bear's head. You want to spray the bear when it is about 50 to 60 feet away, so that it has to pass through that expanding cloud. Um, the active ingredients in bear spray causes temporary loss of the senses of the bears, causes them choke, um, have they have difficulty breathing, it burns their eyes. And a bear has the best nose in the business. They can smell seven times better than a bloodhound. So if it gets into that, the nose, it really burns. So bear spray is your last line of defense, not your only line of defense. But if you have a bear coming at you, like I said, you want to spray it when it's about 50 to 60 feet away, if that's possible even if you're not even if it's right on top of you if you can spray it right before it gets there it may shorten the duration of the attack but i like to have a bear spray and a holster on my side it's a lot easier to get to i think than if you have it on your chest and every little half second matters so if you have to you can spray the bear from your hip you don't even have to take it out and aim it so bears coming at you pop it off and spray it and it's really important that you practice this, just like trying to get better at basketball or anything, you want to practice it. You don't want to practice spraying, but you want to practice popping that off and being able to use that as fast as you can. Um, if you have any other questions about how to avoid a bear conflict or a encounter an attack, um, please contact your lo local Idaho Department of Fish and Game office. And if you want to, you can ask for Jeremy. I appreciate your attention.